All right, week seven in the NFL kicks off Thursday night with the New York Giants at the Philadelphia Eagles. This line opened at six and a half point favorites for the Eagles. It's dropped down to four and a half. That's the number I got right now. The Eagles have played horrible. A valiant comeback effort against Baltimore fell a little short with that failed two point conversion at the end. Good job by the Baltimore defense. Eagles have been decimated by injury this year. Just to give you a brief rundown, on their of offensive line alone, Peters, Dillard, Siomalo, Brandon Brooks, Driscoll, Lane Johnson, both tight ends, Ertz and Goddard, wide receivers, Jeffrey, Rieger, Whiteside, Jackson, who's supposed to return Thursday against the Giants, Duke Riley, Miles Sanders, Avante Maddox, Malik Jackson, Marcus Epps, Kevon Wallace. Now, that's a long list of our injuries, especially all those on the offensive line, including your two tight ends. Huge, huge. The Giants have been beat up as well. They have nobody left on that team, especially with Barkley out. One and six straight up are the Giants. Five and zero oh against the spread on the road. One and eight straight up on the road for New York. Eight and sixteen against the spread versus Philadelphia is the Giants. Zero oh and four against the spread on Thursdays. Daniel Jones three TDs only. Three passing TDs on the year to six interceptions. The road team is four and zero oh against the spread in this series. Philly, 2-5 against spread last seven games, 1-5-1 one, one straight up, 2-6 against spread at home, 2-4 against the spread versus the Giants, 5-0 oh straight up versus the Giants, 9-1 straight up versus the Giants to go a little deep for the last 10, 5-5 five five over the last 10 against the spread versus the Giants, 0-4 oh against spread as both a fave and a home fave, one less at home this year the Eagles are, I think that comeback showed me a little something, I think the Giants are more of a mess than the Eagles, I think as bad as all four of these teams have played in the NFC East, the Cowboys and Eagles should still separate themselves slightly, slightly from the Giants and the Washington football team. I'll take Philly to win this and cover, and uh, this begins a stretch where the Eagles play the Giants, Dallas, the Giants. So if they are to come anywhere close to a decent team and get around that 500 mark, which isn't really a decent team for a playoff team, but a decent team overall. It starts tonight. Buffalo, minus 13 on the road to play the New York J-E-T-S. The Bills, they're four and two straight up. One and four against the spread on the road. Road team is four and one against spread in this head to head. The underdog is eight and three against the spread verse. Over is seven and three in New York in this matchup. 2-4 against the spread at home are the Jets versus Buffalo. 0-6 oh against spread. 0-5 oh against spread as underdogs. The Jets are a mess. They're ranked 32nd overall offense, 31st overall defense. That does not bode well. They're allowing 30.8 points a game and scoring an average of 12.5 points per game. I don't care if the Bills should not be favored by double digits. I will take Buffalo and I will take them to cover the spread as well. It's a little tough picking a double-digit spread, but after what Miami did to the Jets last week, I, I just can't support the Jets at all. They are the worst team in football. Buffalo wins this and covers that big number. Carolina on the road, 7.5-point underdogs in New Orleans. Teddy Bridgewater and Mike Davis, not the combo you're used to hearing uh, it definitely doesn't ring a bell like Cam Newton and Christian McCaffrey does, but they have been getting the job done. Recently, the first two games, obviously, losses, 3-3 three and three on the year, are the Panthers. The over is 7-0 and in New Orleans versus Carolina. The underdog is 10-2 and two against the spread in this head-to-head -head matchup. Over is 5-0 and oh in Saints' last five games, and the last five times the Saints were favored, the game has gone over the total number as well. New Orleans, they're 2-4 against spread, 2-6 against spread at home. 1-4 against spread versus Carolina. 6-1 straight up versus Carolina. They are 5-15 against spread at home versus the Panthers. The Saints defense ranks 24th. The Saints have only scored less than 30 points once all year. I definitely like them to win this game, but a 7.5 points, that's way too much to be given up in this matchup. I will take Carolina to cover the spread and the Saints to win the game. Next, we have another divisional rivalry. A lot of divisional games this week. Cleveland on the road in Cincinnati. The Bengals, 1-4-1 record. Joe Burrow looking for his second win. The Bengals, they are 4-1 against spread. 6-4 straight up versus Cleveland. 8-2 against the spread versus Cleveland. 4-1 against spread at home versus Cleveland. 3-20-1 straight up in their last 24 games overall. 
The Browns are 2 and 10 against spread versus Cincy, 4 and 8 straight up versus Cincy, 3 and 6 against spread in their last 9 games. Browns 4 and 1 straight up versus Cincy, 1 and 8 against spread on the road, 1 and 8 on the road straight up. I don't know, Cleveland, they've shown me more than Cincinnati has this year. I don't see how I can pick against the Browns to win this game. A field goal, I think that's exactly what they win by. So just for the hell of it, I'll take Cleveland and Cincy to cover the spread, even though I think this game is going to be a push. Next up, Dallas on the road to face Washington. Cowboys, there's another list of injuries. Here's some key names from the Cowboys, too. Olden Smith, Zach Martin, Brandon Knight. Dak Prescott, Armstrong, Bell, Crawford, Diggs, Griffin, Lawrence, Loon. Like, are you kidding me? These two teams have been beat up. Doesn't excuse the bad play I've seen from either one of them, from Dallas and Philly I'm talking about. But at least it makes me feel that they're not quite as bad as what they've been made out to look through the first six weeks of the year. 0-5 against the spread are the Cowboys. 1-4 against spread on the road. 0-5 straight up on the road. Over is 8-1 last nine games versus each other. The underdog is 27-13 and 13 against the spread head-to-head. -head. Dallas has allowed 218 points already through six fucking games. Are you kidding me? That's not a typo. Even the Vikings have only given up 192 points. They're the second worst in the NFL. That is absolutely ridiculous. And who's going to protect the Red Rocket from... Chase Young attacking this Cowboys beat up offensive line all day long. And sorry, Red Rock does not have the legs to escape like Prescott does. I think this is going to be a long day for the Cowboys. Washington football team, they are 1-3-1 and one against spread. 0-5 oh, straight up, 2-13 and 13 straight up at home. 1-5 against spread versus Dallas. 1-7 straight up versus Dallas. 1-6 straight up at home versus Dallas. But I think that corrects itself and not because I think Washington is a better football team than Dallas. I just think Dallas can't overcome these injuries, and their defense was bad from the get-go. Not a good combination when your offense gets hurt and you got a horrible defense. I think Washington wins this game by the small one-point spread, and I will take them to cover. Detroit on the road in Atlanta. Two-and-a-half-point home favorites are the Falcons. Julio Jones being back for Atlanta is huge. Detroit, they're 4-12 against the spread, 2-12 and 12 straight up, 2-6 and six against the spread on the road, 2-7 and seven straight up on the road are the Lions. They're also 1-4 and four straight up versus Atlanta, 6-3 and three straight up in Atlanta. The under is 6-2 and head-to-head -head in this matchup. Falcons, they're 2-4 and four against the spread, 1-5 straight up, 2-5 and five against spread at home, 2-8 and eight straight up at home, 5-0 and oh against the spread versus Detroit recently. And versus teams with losing records. The Falcons are 5-0 against spread. Atlanta has given up a league high 18 passing TDs and 9.8 yards per passing attempt. Bad numbers all around for both these teams. I think Julio Jones is the X factor. I will take Atlanta to cover the 2.5 points and win this game. Green Bay Packers on the road in Houston. Packers getting embarrassed by Tampa. A lot of recency bias, I think, has this number. A little too low. Three and a half points is all the Packers are favored by. Green Bay is 4-1 against spread. 5-0 against spread after a straight-up loss. Green Bay defense is ranked 30th in DVOA and 25th versus the pass. Houston, on the flip side, is 27th in DVOA and 28th in defensive pass efficiency. Houston is 1-6 against spread and straight up last seven games overall. 4-9 against spread at home. 0-6 against the spread as an underdog. I think Green Bay gets right this week again. I think that was a one-off. Just one of them weeks when one team is clicking on all cylinders and the other team, well, they're, they're really not clicking at all. Green Bay bounces back. They get this win and they cover the 3.5 points. Although I did mark down... Houston I was originally taken, but I, I like Green Bay after the more research I've done. I highlighted these yesterday. Pittsburgh on the road at Tennessee. This is the game of the week. There is no question in my mind. Two 5-0 teams. This is going to be good old smash mouth football. It's going to remind you of an AFC North battle, even though Tennessee does not reside there. This matchup is going to be fun. I can't wait to watch this game. I've been looking forward to this game all week. Pittsburgh 6 and 4 straight up versus Tennessee, 4 and 6 against spread versus Tennessee. Steelers are 5 and 2 straight up versus Tennessee, 2 and 4 against spread in Tennessee. 3 and 9 straight up in Tennessee. 
Steelers are 4-1 against spread, 5-0 straight up, 2-3-1 against spread on the road. 4-8 straight up on the road are the Steelers. The over is 6-1 in this head-to-head matchup when they play in Tennessee. The over is 4-1 in this head-to-head series. The Titans, they're 2-4 against spread, 5-0 straight up, 6-3 against spread at home, 7-2 straight up at home, 9-3 straight up at home versus Pittsburgh. Home team is 4-1 against spread head-to-head. The underdog is 10-3 against the spread versus each other. Pittsburgh, they have the second-ranked defense. Tennessee, they have Derrick Henry. This is going to be a fun matchup. The only time Henry has been held somewhat reasonably in check was when he played a top five run defense this one should be interesting i like tennessee at home to win this game by a field goal therefore they win and cover the spread seattle three and a half point favorites in arizona the cardinals have been playing well this year four and two seattle five and oh another unbeaten team on the sked this week seahawks they're one and four against spread versus arizona four and two straight up versus arizona they're 4-1 against spread in their five games last five. 13-4-1 against spread on the road are the Seattle Seahawks. They're 10-2 straight up on the road. 1-5-1 against spread versus Arizona. 5-11 against spread in Arizona. The road team is 9-1-1 against spread in this series. The underdog is 8-1-1 against the spread in this series. Two numbers that kind of contradict each other. One of them will obviously be broken this week. Arizona, they're 8 and 16 and 1 straight up in their last 25 games. 4 13 and 1 straight up at home. 1 5 and 1 against spread at home versus Seattle. 0 oh, 4 and 1 straight up and home to Seattle. The under is 5 and 0 oh in their last five meetings. I like Seattle to win this game by a field goal. Therefore, Arizona covers the 3.5 point spread. Next up, we have Jacksonville in L.A. to face the Chargers. Both teams with only one win on the season. The Chargers are 7.5 point favorites. This is a tough number. I still don't have it circled as I'm reading. I'm going to make my decision by the time I finish talking about it. The Jags, they're 2-5 against spread on the road. 1-6 straight up on the road. 1-4 against spread their last five games. And 0-5 straight up. 0-4 against spread at L.A. when they face the Chargers. 0-8 against spread versus the Chargers. The favorite is 7-2 against the spread versus each other. The over is 8-2-1 head-to-head in this series. The Chargers, they're 9-1 against spread versus Jacksonville. 8-2 straight up versus Jacksonville. 2-9-1 against spread at home. 0-5 straight up at home. 5-0 against spread versus Jacksonville. 7-1 straight up versus Jacksonville for more numbers. 7-13-2 against spread their last 22 overall. They're 1-7 straight up in their last 8 games. The Chargers, they finally get a win this week. I think this domination over Jacksonville continues. I'll take the Chargers and I will take them to cover the 7.5 points. Let me highlight that now. Kansas City, 9.5 point road favorites to face the Denver Broncos. The Chiefs. They are 4-1 against spread on the road, 5-0 straight up on the road, 13-2 against spread their last 15 games, 14-1 straight up in their last 15 games, 10-2-1 against spread as a fave, 6-0 against spread in Denver, 8-1 against spread versus Denver. Road team is 4-1 against spread versus each other, the fave is 5-2 against spread versus each other. The Broncos, they're 4-2 against spread at home. 4-2 4-2 straight up at home. 0-5 straight up versus KC and at home to KC. I think Kansas City is definitely the better team. I think Kansas City definitely gets the win here, but 9.5 points, I do not think they cover. I think this is more a 3-6, 7-point game, maybe a 5-point game. It's going to fall somewhere in that number in my mind. So I will take Denver to cover the spread and KC to win. I wouldn't be surprised if Denver even pulled the upset here. San Fran on the road to face New England. San Fran two-point underdogs on the road. Three and three are the Niners. Two and three is the Patriots. San Fran, they're five and one against spread on the road. Nine and two straight up on the road. 18 and seven straight up their last 25 games. Six and one against spread as an underdog. New England, two and five against spread their last seven games. 17 and eight straight up in their last 25. And they are 17 and four straight up at home in their last 21. 
Four and one against spread versus San Fran. Four and one straight up versus San Fran. Two and four straight up at home to San Fran. Cam Newton, is he back? Is he healthy yet? San Fran, they're still going to be without Mostert. I think they can get this job done on the road. I like San Fran to win and cover this spread. But really, I like both teams. This is a coin flip in my opinion. I'm rolling with San Fran, small number to cover. Tampa Bay on the road, four point. Favorites in Las Vegas to face the Raiders. The Raiders 3-2, Tampa Bay 4-2. Everybody's got a lot of recency bias on Tampa and Green Bay because of the result of that game last week with Tampa just absolutely destroying the Packers. I think that changes this week. This is my upset of the week. I am picking the Raiders to win and cover the spread. Obviously, I will lay out the numbers for you guys to make your own decision. Tampa Bay, they're 4-2 against spread on the road. 7-15 straight up on the road. 6-10-2 against spread their last 18 games. They are 4-1 straight up. Tampa, the Bucks, they're 1-5-1 against spread versus teams with a winning record. The underdog is 4-1 against spread head-to-head. -head. The over is 5-0 in this head-to-head -head series. The over is 4-1 in the Raiders' last five games, period. Las Vegas, they are 1-4 against spread at home. 8-4 straight up at home. 4-2 against spread versus Tampa Bay. 4-2 straight up versus Tampa Bay. 4-1 straight up at home versus Tampa Bay. 5-2 against spread their last seven games. The Raiders, they have already beaten Kansas City, New Orleans, and Carolina. Still getting no respect. Derek Carr has 11 TDs, one interception. Josh Jacobs, one of the best backs in the game right now. I don't know. I like the Raiders in this one. I'm picking that as my upset of the week. Chicago in LA to face the Rams. The Rams are six point home favorites. The Bears, they're seven and three against spread versus the Rams. Six and two straight up versus LA. Four and two against spread their last six games. Six and 12 against spread their last 18. They are six and one straight up in their last seven games. Three and six against spread on the road. Five and one straight up on the road. Four and zero oh against spread on Monday night football are the Chicago Bears. The Bears. The home team is 4-1 against spread versus each other. Chicago is 7-3 against spread. I already said that. LA Rams are 6-1 straight up at home. 2-4 against the spread at home versus Chicago. 9-4 straight up at home to Chicago. The under is 5-2 versus each other. Bears defense. Bears, all they do is rely on defense. They win close games. I, I don't think any team's won as many close games as them this year. I, I'd even... Go back as far as last year, although I have not looked up any numbers. That's just the picture I have in my mind is Bears, defense, 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 win a close game at the end or hold on to a close game at the end as they did with Tampa Bay when they beat them 20 to 19 a couple weeks ago. I like the Bears to win this game outright and obviously cover the spread. I don't think that is a big upset like the Raiders over Tampa is. If you guys want to call it one, call it one. That's my week seven picks. Hopefully I bounce back. Dag Swag first episode, November 1st or the 15th. Haven't figured it out yet. Got a lot going on. Anyways, peace.